Good afternoon, mga kapatid. Good afternoon, mga kapamilya kay Kristo. Hallelujah. Welcome po sa OBG family, only by grace, Abu Dhabi. And we would like to welcome our special guest. <laughs> Ang ating panauhing pangdangal, galing pa sa Pilipinas, Nanay Levi at Tatay Dani. Ang nanay at tatay ng ating butihing Pastor Patrick. So welcome po and welcome back Pastor Patrick, uh, Pastor Aday, Dominic, Ate Malu, and of course, welcome po sa ating lahat. Hallelujah. Ang sabi sa uh, 2 Timothy ver uh, chapter 3 verse 16, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and it teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip His people to do every good work. Hallelujah. So, Every Friday, pinag-aaralan po natin before nag-uumpisa ang worship service. Meron po tayong Bible school. Dito po natin um, napag-aaralan yung mga of course, yung, yung Bible. Yung mga sinasabi ng Bible. May it be in Old Testament, New Testament, pinag-aaralan po natin yan dito. And praise the Lord because the Lord is leading us to this na kailangan talaga natin always, always tayong mag-aral ng mga salita niya para po tayo mismo makita natin or mare-reflect natin ang ating mga buhay-buhay if it's if we are living according sa will ng Panginoon. Amen? Amen? So today, our topic is from the book of uh, from the epistle of, first epistle of Paul to the Corinthians chapter 10 verse 1 to 13. And you see, the warning from Israel history. Some of the versions says, learning from the Israel's failure. And this is referring to the, actually, uh, Paul is referring to our ancestors, the Israelites, during the uh, deliverance from the bondage of Egypt. So if we may read with conviction for ready one two three. I don't want to forget your brothers and sisters about our ancestors in the wilderness long ago. All that you have read and heard about, moved ahead of them, and all that you walk to the sea in the right now. In the clouds of the sea, all of them were like the fathers of Moses. All of them ate the same spiritual food, and all of them drank the same spiritual water. For they drank from the spiritual rock that traveled with them, and that rock was Christ. Yet God was not pleased with most of them, and their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. These things happened as a warning to us, so that we would not crave evil things as they did, or worship idols as some of them did. As the scriptures say, the people celebrated with feasting and drinking, and they indulged in pagan rivalry. And we must not engage in sexual immorality as some of them did, causing 23,000 of them to die in one day. Nor should we put Christ to the test, as some of them did, and then died from snake bites. And don't grumble as some of them did. And then they were destroyed by the angel of death. These things happened to them as examples for us. They were written down to warn us who lived at the end of the age. If you think you are standing strong, be careful not to fall. The temptations in your life are no different from the others' experience. And God is faithful, 
He will not allow the temptation to be more than what he can stand. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. Praise you, Lord. So, ito pong last week po pinag-aralan natin or the last month for the whole month of um, October, pinag-aralan po natin ang tungkol sa mga rights of an apostle, rights of Apostle Paul, in which nakita po natin the maturity of Paul in his spiritual walk. Dito naman we can see the immaturity of our, so to say, ancestors, the Israelites, during the time of um, when they were delivered from the slavery of Egypt. So, as you see, Paul started with, I don't want you to forget. I don't want you to forget. Because at that time in Corinth, in Corinth believers were acting so immaturely, claiming their rights, that they are free to do whatever they want to do because it, the Lord Jesus Christ has already uh, redeemed them. So that was why Paul started with, I don't want you to forget or I want you to remember, dear brothers and sisters, let this be a lesson to, to, all, of the, to all of you. And mind you, Paul was addressing this letter to the believers in Corinth, in Corinth or the Corinthians believers. So he said, dear brothers and sisters, I want you to remember about what happened in the past during uh, the time when, when uh, our ancestors or the Israelites was about to, to, to be uh, liberated or to be delivered from the slavery of, uh, of the Egyptians. It was then, he said, all of them were guided by a cloud and moved ahead of them. So... Um, during the past uh, two Bible study this week, uh, last week we studied um, Exodus, right? Exodus 13 and Exodus 13. And napakagaling ni Lord kasi um, He lead us into reading the whole chapter, uh, the whole book of Exodus. So that is why uh, I am confident na most of us meron ng idea what happened to the Israelites back then. So ito po, dito, one of uh, the events was that a, a cloud were with them when they are about to, to exit the Red Sea diba? there was a, a cloud that was hovering upon them and, and that was the Holy Spirit always with them that was God being always with them wherever they go and all of them walked through the sea on dry ground I believe we are all familiar of this. The parting of the Red Sea and letting the Israelites walk in a dry land in the middle of the Red Sea. Amen? Amen. See how the Lord was so faithful and how, how the Lord has favored the Israelites back then. In the cloud and in the sea, all of them were baptized as followers of Moses. In the JP version, it was said, all were, were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Baptized here means being under the leadership of Moses. Amen? Right now, we could say that we are baptized into Jesus Christ because we are under the leadership of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? We walk under the statutes or under the instructions of Jesus Christ. That is why... Uh, back then, they were called, they were baptized as the followers of Moses because Moses is a man of God. So definitely, whatever Moses is uh, telling them, definitely that is coming from God. Amen? Amen. And all of them ate the same spiritual food and all of them drank the same spiritual water. Do you remember the, the instance of God giving them manna? on a daily basis, every morning. So they had that. It was a miraculous provision of the Lord to the Israelites. And even, they were able to drink water, wherein at that time, they said there was no water to drink, and the people complained to Moses. Amen? So it was all about them complaining. 
In fact, why did they ask to be freed from the slavery of Egyptians? They said, we want to go to the wilderness. We want to worship our God. But then when they were out of the Egypt, they started grumbling. They started complaining. Moses, why did you bring us here? You should have let us die in Egypt. Then bringing us all here, and we all die of hunger, we all die of thirst, and everything, and so on and so forth. And dami nila complain. Yet God was not pleased with most of them, that is why. And their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. These things happened as a warning to us. So here now, during the, the time of Paul, you see Paul was the one who, who planted the church in, in Corinth. And then people there, the believers there, started to complain as well. They started to, to be acting immaturely. They started to act in a deliberate manner wherein they, they think that sinning is okay. Because forgiveness is provided. That is what they thought. So they would not crave evil things. So... As what uh, Paul said, these things happen as a warning to us. So here we can say that whatever happened in the past, and it is being written in the Bible for us to reflect on it. That should serve as our warning. Because back then, there were so many things that happened, and God was so furious, He was so angry with the Israelites. In fact, here it says, 23,000 of them died in one day because of the wrath of God. When these Israelites started to worship gods, they curved cards, it was the time that uh, Moses went up to Mount Sinai and met with the Lord. And then these Israelites, they became impatient. Asan na si Moses? Asan na si Moses? Aaron, pwede ka bang gumawa ng Diyos Diyosan? Pwede ka bang gumawa ng Diyos namin na pwede namin sambahin? And you see the immaturity of Aaron as well. Pumaya because of the pressure that he felt with, with his Israelites. Sabi niya, sige, bigyan niyo sa akin yung mga golds and everything. And nung bumal, and yun nga, nagkaroon ng ano, nagkaroon ng, ano bang ano ng cow? Nagkaroon sila ng winning worship na golden cow. And then, nung bumaba si Moses, sabi niya, Aaron, ano ba itong ginawa mo? Ano ba itong ginawa mo? Diba? You should have told them na hindi ganun. Kasi nandun ako, nakikipag-usap sa Panginoon, tapos ikaw dito, ikaw ang pinag-iwanan ko sa kanila, hinayaan mo sila. Tapos ang sabi ni Aaron, Ewan ko, sinunod ko lang naman ang mga gold, tapos lumabas na yung golden cup. Diba? Ayaw lang mapagintangan. So, ganun po. So during the time, as the scriptures say, the people celebrated with feasting and drinking, and they indulged in, in pagan revelry. Alam mo yun yung mga ginawa nila? Habang nag, feeling nila nag-worship sila doon sa golden cup, nag-iinuman, may mga nangyayari pang mga sexual orgy. Alam mo yun yung grabe yung mga ginawa nila? They were blinded because of their worship to that evil. Nor should we put Christ to the test as some of them did and then died from snake bites. Do you remember when the Lord sent them snakes and it killed them? And then they don't grumble as some of them did. Grumble means complaining. Sabi nga natin, sabi ko nga, um, after, after, what God did to them after the signs and wonders na pinakita ng Panginoon, after their escape from Egypt, still they were able to complain. Akala siguro nila na pag nakawala sila sa Egypt at that time, magiging palwa na yung buhay, they can do whatever they want because they are no longer slaves of the Egyptians. But then the Lord, being His all-knowing nature, God is all-knowing, alam niya, Kaya pinaikot-ikot pa niya for 40 years. 
Pinaikot-ikot pa niya sa wilderness kasi alam niya na magbabago. Magbabago ang isip at mga damdamin ng mga Israelitang ito. Diba? Hindi God is all knowing kasi nangyari talaga. Every time na ginawa ng Diyos. Imagine mo, pina, binigyan na sila ng pagkain araw-araw. They were given a manna freshly every morning. It was provided. Water. And then they were even uh, provided with meat. A quail or pugo. And then, sa, sa, in the book of Numbers, they were still able to complain. Nagsawa na kami sa mana. Nagsawa na kami sa pugo. Gusto naman namin, katulad nung nasa Egypt kami, na nakakapagluto kami na may sibuyas, bawang. Diba? Ganun ang ginawa nila. Gusto namin yun. Ibalik nyo na lang kami doon sa Egypt. Imagine that. They forgot what the Lord had promised to them. A land flowing with milk and honey. Diba? Pagpapalik mo lang yun dahil sa sibuyas at bawang. <laughs> And then, we're destroyed by the angel of death. Actually, this this um, destruction, or the, it was referring to the firstborn in e of Egypt who were taken or uh, killed by the angel of death. This was during the Passover, when 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 the Lord told them to apply a blood of a blameless lamb on your doorpost. And when, this was the 10th plague actually in Egypt. And of course, if you are not a believer of the Lord at that time, you won't listen to Moses. So probably there were really Israelites at that time in Egypt who did not believe. I, I believe so. And they were destroyed by the angel of death. So the angel of death, if, if your doorpost has no blood on it, with the blood of the blameless land as the Lord commanded, then... Every house that time ng Egypt may patay, mga firstborn. So, ganun po ang nangyari. So, if, if, if a, a, an Israelite had no faith in the Lord at that time, so probably they were, uh, uh, firstborns of their family had died as well. So, these things happened to them as what? As an example to all of us in the present age. So this time when, when Paul was writing this, it was a time, it was their time in the Corinth, in, uh, in Corinth, uh, the Corinthians, right? So it was true to them. So Paul was saying to them, it is written to warn, to warn us, or an, as, as an example to all of us. So right now, then, tayo din ngayon, this is still written. So dalawa na sa atin ngayon, we are so privileged. At that time, the example was only back then. Sa Old Testament, Numbers, Exodus, yun yung mga example sa kanila. Tayo ngayon, we're so privileged, we're so, we're so blessed kasi meron na tayong Numbers, Exodus na babasahin, meron pang Corinthians. Amen? Amen. Amen. Aren't we privileged by this? We have the example written by Moses and we have the example written by Paul. Doble dog na tayo. Indeed, we are so, ano, we are... We are so privileged na dalawa-dalawa pa yung mapagkukunan natin ng examples. They were written down to warn us who live at the end of the age. Can't you see we are already at the end of the age? So many things are happening. Diba? So many prophecies have been fulfilled. So let us take them as an example to live a life that want, that God wants us to live. Finally, if you think you are standing strong, be careful not to fall. Now this talks about being overconfident. Yung overconfident na tayo na every time we make mistake, pinatawad naman na ako ni Lord. His grace is sufficient. Of God, a loving stock by making it parang on our side ba? Na pinapatawad naman ako ni Lord every time ako nagkakasala. Diba? Ganun tayo eh. But sabi dito, be careful not to fall. And 13, the temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. And God is faithful. 
It's focused on this. The temptations in your life are no different from what other other experience. If you're if you are thinking right now, the yung mga pinagdadaanan mo ngayon, yung mga testings, trials mo ngayon, tribulations mo ngayon, iniisip mo na, grabe, bakit ako lang? Bakit ako Lord? Bakit ako pa? Bakit kanino ba? Diyan sa katabi mo, gusto mo? <laughs> diba? We have to remember that these testings, these trials, are being experienced of every human. Hindi naman itong mga trials of a superhuman eh. Hindi naman itong mga trials na, na nakikita natin sa TV with Superman, na nai-experience niya. Tapos sabi mo, hindi naman ako si Superman, hindi ko yan kaya. So you have to remember that bawat, bawat um, pagsubok na pinagdadaanan natin, that is common to everyone. Everyone had undergone it. Everyone was able to surpass it. Everyone was able to walk through it. Diba? So ano hindi mo kaya? Oh, and besides, sabi dito, and God is faithful. God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you can bear. Sabi dito, you, he will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. Let's take the example of the life of Job. The Lord allowed Satan to test him, to tempt him. But sabi ng Lord, wag mo siyang, wag mo lang siyang papatayin. I-test mo siya. But I can assure you that he will not fall. He will not fall into temptation because he is my tao ko siya. And he is confident with Job. Diba? So si Job nga hindi namatay eh. Yun ang gusto ng Lord. Sige, i-test mo siya. Pero alam ko, wag mo lang siyang papatayin. Sabi ng Lord. So let's rest into that goodness of the Lord sa buhay natin as His believer. When you are tempted, ito pa, when you are tempted, He will show you a way out so that you can endure. Sa so other translations, he w- but when you are tempted, the Lord is faithful, He will provide a way out. Still a provision of a way out. Si Lord pa rin magpo-provide. Diba? His grace has two faces. One is the being unmerited, unearned, diba? undeserved, and the other face is the enabling power. Enabling power to surpass whatever circumstances you have, whatever trials you have. And that is the Lord working in our lives. The Holy Spirit is enabling us to say no to every sin that is being tempted to us. So when you say, hindi ko talaga kaya, natitempt talaga ako, then you might have not called the Lord. You might not have called the Holy Spirit to help you. And mind you, the Holy Spirit is our present help. Amen. Remember? Let's not forget that. He is our comforter. He is our everything. He is our enabling power. And that is, the Lord Jesus had left to us when He ascended to heaven. Sabi niya, I will, I will be with you even to the end of the age. Amen. So, let's not be, ano, huwag tayong Magpa, magpatala sa mga buso ng ating damdamin. The Lord had provided us a way out. He had provided, provided us the Holy Spirit. And the same Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead is in us. So, anong pangulang sa atin? Amen? Amen? So, let's take the example of what happened to the immature believers of the Lord in the past. And let's walk forward. Let's press on. Kasi the, we have to run the race with endurance. Amen. Kasi, you know, that God is a good rewarder. Amen. Our Father is a good rewarder. And Amen. Good rewards awaits us. Amen? Amen. And as all said, Abba Father, we just want to thank you, Lord, for your word. Maraming salamat, Lord, kasi hindi ka nagsasawang paalalahan ng kami. Hindi ka nagsasawang i-review kami. Lord, every review that we receive, Lord, we thank you for that. Kasi lagi mo kami tinatama, lagi mo kami nililid into the right path. Amen. Lord, sabi mo nga, Lord, that the path, that the road to heaven is narrow, but you are there with us, Lord. Amen. Pinipilter mo ang mga dadaanan namin, kung ano ang dapat na namin gawin, Lord, so that we can walk through your road to your kingdom. Ginagawa mo pa rin, Lord. Salamat, Lord, sa provisions. Lahat-lahat ng provisions mo, Panginoon, pati sa 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 grasya mo sa Holy Spirit who is always there for us 
your power to say no to all the temptations that we are facing. And Lord, thank you that it, as we walk every day, we are maturing, we are transforming, Lord, through your grace. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit. In this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.